is Katie's Quilting Corner, chatting about quilting, sewing, corgis, dog agility, and life in general. Enjoy my blenders and celebrate my successes with me as I explore this fun hobby of quilting. Hey there, welcome to Katie's Quilting Corner, uh, my very first episode, and I am a fairly newish quilter. I've been quilting about almost a year or so. I first got started into quilting with a project kit that I purchased at a big box craft store for all of seven dollars and uh, started it about six years ago or so and then threw it into a box and it stayed there for a while. And then I decided that I was going to finish a, a craft project. I'm one of those people that loves to start craft projects get it halfway finished, and then get frustrated and bored with it, and I'll throw it into a box. So I decided I wanted to stop that habit now and pulled it out and finished it. Um, when I got to the quilt sandwich part, I ended up going to a, a craft night at a local quilt shop to get help on the actual quilting because I had no idea what I was doing and the binding portion, which scared the ever-loving crap out of me. So uh, the lady there was very helpful, and I got all of it done that night, except for the hand stitching of the binding on the back. And it's my, my daisy wall hanging, which you can see on my blog. A majority of it is a fused applique, and there was some piecing in it as well. My previous craft projects that I dabbled with in the past I, I did a lot of knitting. I've been knitting for about 10 years. Can't really do all kinds of different stitches, but I learned how to add and, and drop stitches. I, I made a little shawl one time and, you know, just I made a big blanket. But in Florida, there really isn't a big need for scarves and blankets. And I didn't feel like sitting and counting all of my stitches because I just want to sit in front of the TV and do something with my hands. So I kind of stopped doing that because I was finding all my projects were not getting used like I wanted them to, primarily because I live in Florida. I've done cross-stitch some. Again, really tedious. You have to sit there with a piece of paper and count your stitches and all of that. And I've done some little paintings and, and stuff, but it just all seemed really tedious and nothing really stuck for very long. It just seemed like I'd go to the craft store, drop a bunch of money, and then I'd get halfway done with my project. And then it'd sit in my closet. So quilting has been really different for me. And I've talked with a few other quilters that say the same thing. And I, I think part of it is that I can I can get done with a project in a day if I want to. You know, I don't I don't have to have it sit in my closet for weeks and weeks unless it's one of those large projects that I feel like that's okay to do. But it it's almost like there's so many different steps that you have and as you go along you can you can complete them. You know, you can complete piecing five or six blocks in a day and you feel accomplished about something. And I think that's important for me so I don't get frustrated. The sewing machine that I use, I actually got at my wedding. My aunt is a huge quilter, and on my wedding registry, I put that I wanted just a simple sewing machine from Target.com. Oh, there's Bernie. And um, she saw that, and she's like, well, you know, uh, take that off your registry. I'm going to get you a good sewing machine, not just a, a you know, little crappy sewing machine. So her and, and my aunt Sue got me a little Janome 415. It's a, it's a good beginner sewing machine, and um, let me go see what she wants. Okay, I'm back. So my Janome is a 415, like I said. Um, it's a good beginner sewing machine. I, I like it for the most part, and I'm just, it's not good for free motion quilting, which I found out when I started doing larger projects. It just cannot handle the stippling and stuff. It, the machine is just not strong enough to do that. So I mostly, right now, I use it for applique, putting, you know, machine applique onto things, doing my buttonholes whenever I've got a project that needs a buttonhole or something like that, or my husband needs me to sew a button on, I don't want to do it by hand, I'll pull it out for that. But my main machine now is a Singer 201 that I got last year. I'd heard about, on the Quilted Cupcake podcast, Jean had been having the same problems with her free motion quilting work, and tried to get a new machine, and so she ended up with the Singer 201 because, you know, she's on the same problem that I have where you're quilting on a budget. You don't have $12,000 to drop on a Bernina 830. So um, she got a Singer 201, and I thought, well, you know, maybe that'll work for me because I looked at the machine, and I looked at my other options, and it just seemed like it would be practical. 
So I went on Craigslist and found a lady that had one for 150 bucks and um, got it from her. It was built into a cabinet. I took it to a uh, sewing, sewing machine vacuum repair shop, had it um, cleaned up and maintained. And once I figured out the type of thread that I need to be using in it, it's been working just fine. I use it for my piecing primarily and my free motion quilting. Uh, it does a fantastic job with free motion quilting. I really love the way my projects turn out on it. I figured out that I need to be using, I use a silky embro embroidery thread or um, a really good quality cotton thread. Uh, the cotton thread tends to have a lot of lint, so I try to stay away from uh, a lot of cotton threads. That's the big problem with cotton. But the um, silky embroidery thread seems to work really, really well for my free motion quilting. And in the future, I hope one day to be able to save up my money for a nice embroidery machine. Um, I've looked at the, the Foss machines, and they're wonderful, but very expensive. Um, I've looked at a few Berninas, and then I've also looked at the Brother embroidery machines, the nice ones you can get from the dealer. And I'm just really not sure which one I, I really need to go for. I know it seems like every two years or so the newest thing comes out. So I'll have to see what I can afford when I save up some money. Um, so my big past projects that I did last year, um, my biggest one was a pinwheel quilt. And I, I've got that picture on my blog. I'll add it to my blog note. Um, it, it was a 65 by 65 inch quilt. And it's all applique. It's got these little, um, like oval shaped disc and each each pinwheel is a different color on the quilt and then the center is a button um so that was my first big quilt and that was the first quilt i quilted using my finger to a one so um halfway through that quilt is when i figured out how to fix my thread tension problem with the right thread so um it's it's the quilt that i'll always keep because it's my first my my first big project and then for christmas last year i finished a daisy quilt for my mom using some leftover daisy fabric that I had. She really likes daisies, so that's what I ended up using for that. And uh, some other things that I'm doing now, I'm making um, ebook covers for like the Kindle and the Nook. I found a great pattern that I've shared a few times on my blog, um, made by Birdful Stitches on Etsy, and I've been using that. It's a fantastic, fantastic pattern. It's got the different sizes for several different covers, um, including the iPad, if you've got an iPad. Um, and it's easy to put together. It's not quilted, unfortunately, um, but it does have, have handy pockets and a nice little closure, and it comes together pretty easily, so um, I do like that. Some other projects I'm working on right now, I am part of a mug rug exchange. Um, I just got assigned my partner, so now I've, I've been, I sketched out a few designs last night on, I'm going to make two mug rugs for her, so I sketched out some some cute little designs. Um, I'm also hosting a strip twist block exchange through Big Tent. And if you listen to quilting podcasts, you should be on Big Tent because that's where some other stuff happens. I did a, um, a block exchange last year, our first one, um, which w it went okay. <laughs> I made the mistake of choosing kind of the wrong pattern because uh, it used a triangle template, which kind of messed a few people up. So, um, this next block exchange doesn't have any templates at all. It's all two and a half inch strips, um, so it should go pretty well. I've already made four test blocks, and they're gigantic. So um, each person will be sending out six blocks, and the sign-up deadline is, I believe, January 31st. I remember correctly. I can check on that, but I'll put, I'll put the link up on the podcast notes. Um, You'll be assigned two partners, and you'll send each partner six blocks. Um, and you'll base your color choices on their preferences and their profile, if they have any. Um, if not, you can send them whatever. Some people, like myself, I put down, I'll accept whatever you want to send me. I really don't care. I love scrappy quilts. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. I can't wait till that gets started. Um, something else I've been doing this year, which is new, is a 2011 Rainbow Scrap Challenge, which each month you're... Um, assigned a color and you need to go through all of your scraps and put stuff together using that color scrap. There's no guidelines, you just kind of need to do whatever. So I put up a picture, gosh, about a week ago, I think, of some, some blue, this, this month is blue, January is blue. So I put up some blue blocks that I've worked on. I used my blue strips for the strip twist blocks to kind of test those out and see how it would go. And I made some crumb blocks and some little Penwell template blocks. 
some teeth things. I'm not really sure. I've got a, a bowl full of blue scraps that I can do some more with, but I'm really not sure what else I want to do. I know I want to use them for like a rainbow quilt, just different colors all sewn together. I know some people had enough blue scraps they could do just a blue quilt in itself, and I just, I kind of want to have all the colors together. I don't know why. I don't want to just do a blue quilt, but that's what I decided to do. I, I don't have a lot of scraps compared to a lot of quilters. Uh, I didn't even know that quilters kept scraps until about five months into my quilting, and then I realized all of those little tiny pieces that I cut off and threw away, people keep those, and they do stuff with them. <laughs> I, I saw this one picture of a lady. She used her fabric selvages to make, like, a pillow and a bath mat, and I thought, oh, my God, I didn't know people kept those. Maybe I should be keeping those. And then I was kind of kicking myself, thinking, wow. You know, I, I threw away some great little scraps of fabric that I really liked, but it's okay. I ended up buying a 15-pound box of scraps off of eBay to get myself started again, and I'm still going through those scraps and doing stuff with them. Um, I separate them by, by color, and then I pulled out all the Christmas-themed ones, so that's been interesting. And once I, once I saw Bonnie Hunter's uh, crumb block tutorial, I just went off with that. I also did some square to square blocks, which I worked on recently. I had a lot of square in the square blocks sitting in my bin and decided to sew some of them together. So now there are four square to square blocks sewn together, um, and I'm not sure what else I'm going to do with them. Apparently when I cut out the center block, I did not do it accurately. <laughs> so they're all different sizes. I squared them up and realized I'm going to have to put sashing on them or something so they're all the same size. But I'm sure that quilt, once I put it together, it's just going to be a mishmash of stuff. So I may just put it together and not even bother getting it all squared up. Um, just have it kind of look wonky. Um, and then my mystery quilt that I started in my class with Kimberly Emo a few weeks ago. I'm using this great fabric from Moda called... Uh, Origins by Basic Gray. It, it's a jelly roll that I purchased, and it's not normally a color that I would pick. I'm more of a pastel or like purple, pink, green, blue. I've got a lot of blue in my fabric stash. But this is like a, an olive green and black and yellow and orange and cream. It's an interesting color combination, and it's really striking when it's put together with her pattern. I'm really liking it, and I didn't think I would. In our instructions for the class, we were told that our jelly roll needed to have different color values in it, light, dark, and medium, and that a jelly roll of all medium scraps would not look well. The problem with that is almost all jelly rolls are all medium uh, color, medium values. So I had a really hard time trying to decide on a jelly roll because I thought, oh, you know, this is not going to look good if I pick the wrong jelly roll. So I ended up with this one because it was very obvious that it had all the color values needed. I think it's going to look great. I know when I was in, in class with Kimberly, she was excited to see me using it. She has a quilt for an upcoming mystery, mystery quilt class that she's done in that fabric. So I need to go by the quilt shop next month and see if it's up yet. So that's my main projects right now. I've got a few other little things that I'm doing, just little gifts for people. I don't have a big quilt that I'm working on right now. I haven't picked out stuff. I've got a few kits in my closet. I've got some kits that I purchased at the quilt show last November that my quilt guild put on, and I haven't started those. So I'm really, I'm not sure what big quilt I'm going to do next and what technique I want to try out. If something new or just kind of work on something, I really don't know. Something I need to think about, and I didn't realize I didn't have anything going on until I started doing this podcast. So that's interesting. I do have a blog. I blog a lot. I've been blogging not about quilting, but just kind of in general um, for like eight or nine years now. I think it's important to kind of document the life and your experiences and all of that so you can look back and kind of see all the stuff that you've done, things you've been through, because it's interesting going back and reading, you know. And, and when I started quilting, I immediately knew that this needed to be something that was separate. One, so I wouldn't drive my friends crazy just talking about quilting, because not all of them are quilters. And too, so I could see my quilting journey, you know. I think that's important. You don't get frustrated with, you know, my technique isn't as good as such and such a person. I know I'm I'm not 
the best beginner, but I learn and I read and I find ways to improve my technique while still having fun. You know, it's a hobby. It's not a business for me yet. You know, I, I don't know that I ever want it to become a business because I kind of think that takes out the fun of things. But I enjoy making gifts for other people. I enjoy getting little commission work here on the side. But for the most part, it's just something for me to de-stress at the end of my day and have something I can work on and accomplish that is actually useful. I love quilts. Growing up, my mom was given this quilt for her wedding, and whenever I was sick or wasn't feeling well, she would let me curl up with that quilt on our couch, and it just gave me this sense of comfort. And I think that's important that, you know, not only you have that in your life, but you're able to give that to other people, you know, other children too. Um, and people of any age need that kind of comfort, I think. It's important. So it's nice to have a hobby that you can make something that actually gives a feeling like that. I don't know of many other hobbies where you create something that does that. Quilting seems to be kind of kind of a different hobby all around. You know, it's, it's art. It's, you know, a, a stress relief for a lot of people. And you get to make something, which I think is fantastic. Other things in my life, as you heard earlier, I have dogs. <laughs> I have three dogs. Uh, two Pembroke Welsh Corgis, which are the little short stocky dogs that the Queen of England has. That's what they look like. I have two of those, and I have one Cardigan Welsh Corgi, which not many people know about that kind of Corgi. A lot of people make the distinction that it's the Corgi with the tail. So I have three dogs total. I do not have children, which I think is a first for, for a quilting podcaster to not have kids or grandkids. Um, most of the time I hear them getting interrupted by their kids or grandkids, but I'll be the one getting interrupted by dogs doing things and barking and getting into things. So um, I love my dogs. I, I actually was a dog trainer for a few years and decided to take a break from it. It was becoming, you know, it, it just got to be a little much because I have a full-time job too. So when you're working full-time, you know, during the week, working part-time at night or on the weekends, and then you have to come home and take care of a husband and a house and all of that. It just gets to be a bit much, so there's only so much that I can do in life. With my dogs, I do dog agility. I have one dog that's in competition right now. Um, we just started last year. He's been in training for a couple of years, and we're finally ready to start competing. So um, his first trial, he did really well. Got uh, five first place ribbons and five qualifying scores. So um, you'll, you might hear me talk about that on occasion. Um, I love dog agility. I think it's a great thing to do with your dog if you don't mind running around outside. It's good exercise for you and your dog. And um, you get to build this fun bond together and play. It's just, it's all about play and having fun with your dog, which I think is really important if you have dogs in your life. So other things in life, um, like I said, I'm married. I've been married for five years. And, you know, that's going good <laughs> so far. So... Um, I'm pretty young. I'm, I'm not 30 yet. I'm in my late 20s. So uh, I got married pretty young too. And that's been an interesting experience. I love my husband. We've been together nine years. So it's, it's not like it's brand new to me. But, you know, it, it comes with its challenges. I think relationships are interesting to me. It, it's interesting to see the dynamics and what makes people stay together and what makes people not stay together. So marriage certainly takes work. But um, it's fun in the end. You know, you've got your partner and you do things together and all of that. So I'm going on a cruise in March. I love cruising. I've only been one time. So, but it, that's all it took. I'm already addicted. So I, I can't wait to go on my next cruise. I don't know how I'm going to do being away from my sewing machine for a week. But we will see. I am taking along a quilting project, which my husband was not thrilled at hearing about. But... For the most part, it'll be when he's sleeping and I can't sleep. I'm I'm not a good sleeper in strange places. I just I have a real problem with trying to sleep in a weird place, especially when you're on a cruise boat and it's rocking back and forth and you ha are having problems staying in bed sometimes, depending on the weather. So on our last cruise, I would always wake up before sunrise and go sit out on our balcony and watch the sun come up. And um, then we, you know, if we didn't have to be at dinner at a certain time. We would watch the sunset, too, so that was nice. If you ever go on a cruise, get a balcony. I don't care what people say, that you're never in your room. That is complete BS, honestly. We used our balcony a lot. It's so nice to be able to get away from the craziness 
in other parts of the ship, especially when it's a sea day, and just to go enjoy a little place on your own outside, not being stuck in your room the whole time. So I recommend getting a balcony. It is worth the money. Trust me. I am on Big Tent. I don't have my own little section yet. I don't know that I'm going to ask for one because I'm mostly in the regular, you know, miscellaneous talk about anything section. And I do listen to other quilting podcasts. I listen to, I, I mentioned Quilted Cupcake before. I listen to Quilting for the Rest of Us. I love that podcast. It's so useful. It makes me not feel like an idiot. I I also listen to, listen to Sew Stitch Create with Bry Lynn, Scientific Quilter, within a quarter inch, of course. Um, I think Allison's been around for one of the longest quilting podcasts out there. Um, Hip to be a Square is a new one that I've been listening to. I like it a lot. Jackie's Quilting Chronicles, too. Um, I wish she would podcast more because I, I like hearing about her long arm quilting business. That's fascinating to me. The Off Kilter Quilt. Francis, I feel like we are sisters. <laughs> I feel your frustration <laughs> with free motion quilting sometimes. Um, and I love listening to your podcast. I don't comment as much as I should, but. I do. I love listening to you on my way to work. And there are a few other quilting podcasts out there. Noni's Quilting Dreams is new, and I know she's just trying to get the hang of it, so I'm right there with you. That's kind of it, I think. I've, listened, I've tried a few others, but those are the ones that have really stuck around. Um, I like to listen to podcasts that are about 30 to 45 minutes or longer in length. That's about my drive to work in the morning, and I hate having a short episode. I like listening to longer episodes, so for the most part... They're all pretty good. And there are some other podcasts that I listen to, um, but those are the quilting ones. So so for my podcast, I'll be talking about, you know, things I'm working on. I'll be asking for advice because I'm a newish quilter. So if you've got techniques out there you want to share or, you know, you want to tell me you should do it this way. This is a lot easier. For some reason, I tend to do things the hard way the first time. And then I wonder why it turned out awful. Um, then I get frustrated. So <laughs> I try to find uh, the best way to do something accurately because I think that's one of the things that really frustrates me is when I follow the directions for a block and it comes out weird like today I worked on our block of the month for the quilt guild um it's a churn dash block and it didn't square up correctly like it should have and I I know I did my quarter inch seam I cut everything accurately so I don't know I'm wondering if there was something in the directions I don't I don't know it came out close enough so I made two blocks one to swap with someone else and one to keep and I kept the crappier one <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully the next one is not as challenging or I can go to a quilting bee and get help I do go to a quilting bee usually once a month or so uh, there's a nice lady there named Kathleen she's our guild vice president and she helps me whenever I've got questions I want to take another quilting class just to kind of get the beginning stuff down because I know everyone does things differently and I just want to see if there's an easier way to do some stuff. I'm I'm a confident beginner. You know, I know how to do fusible applique. I know how to do binding. Um, I know how to cut my fabric, but there's a lot of stuff I don't know a lot. So it's fun practicing with different techniques. I've got a lot of books. My mom bought me a lot of books for Christmas with different patterns. Uh, one just deals with rectangles. One deals with how to get started on hand applique. There are a few others. And then I've got Kimberly Emo's book for jelly roll quilting, which is really fun um, and easy if you've got her rulers. I, I liked her techniques, the different things you can put together, and it's accurate. You don't have to worry about getting, you know, seven eighths of a, of a square cut out correctly. That's crazy. It's nice. You can do half square triangles pretty easily with her with her technique and very fast I will say it's it's much faster than what I thought if you if you can buy a jelly roll with the two and a half inch strips already cut out you're good to go if you need to cut them you know that doesn't take a lot of time you just gotta iron and get everything ready but if you've got the money to buy jelly rolls go for it I'm on a quilting budget so <laughs> um, I did podcast about that my quilting budget right now is a hundred dollars a month which it's rough. My husband was very nice and let me go over budget this month because he wanted to go eat somewhere and the quilt shop was nearby and he decided to bribe me and say, did you need to get something at the quilt shop because I want to go eat lunch at this place? And I said, well, I've already reached my budget this month and he said, well, that's okay. So I said, sure, I'll go eat lunch with you. So um, that's nice. So yeah, I went 
I went over budget this month, but I think I think it's important for me just to have a budget in mind to keep track of my spending because we are not the Rockefellers, and this is my hobby, not my business yet. Yes. <laughs> Uh, probably never my business, but I would like to make some money on the side to pay for um, quilting. That would be nice. I think everyone would really like that. Um, so yeah, so that's me. Thank you for listening to my podcast. Um, please leave comments on my blog. I love comments. Um, I will uh, be talking about commenters in future podcasts. I'll hopefully do a giveaway or something of that nature. Um, soon because I, I like doing giveaways. I've just got to look through my stuff and see what I have to give away. Um, I gave away some pretty nice yarn and some scraps last time, so maybe I'll do that again. The giveaway was a lot of fun. Uh, and if you want to hear me talk about anything in particular, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just write down stuff as I think of it. Um, I did shatter my iPhone glass yesterday, so now I'm going to have to go without an iPhone for a week, and I don't know what I'm going to do. So I might be blogging and twittering more than usual. Um, so be prepared to be bombarded with blog posts. Um, on Twitter, I am Quilted Magnolia. That was my original name, but I decided to change it to Katie's Quilting Corner because I think that's more personal. But I didn't change my Twitter name. So you can Twitter me at Quilted Magnolia. And um, so that's me. Thanks for listening. Music for the podcast is by Daniel F. Stream on Magnatune.com. You can read all podcast notes and my blog at katiesquiltingcorner.com. <laughs>